Okay, so I was recently asked if it's possible to create a VM within a VM. Now, the simple answer to that question is yes, you can, but it doesn't really work so great inside a virtual box. Okay, so I'm just going to start off by opening up a terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the CPU on this machine. So to do that, I'm just going to type in cat slash proc slash CPU info. And you can see we get a whole load of info come up. And as you can see, this is an Intel i7 CPU. But when it comes to virtualization, something that we are more interested in is that if it's an Intel chip, we have this VMX CPU flag. Now, if you are using an AMD uh, chip, what you're looking for is SVM. Now, if I just type in the same thing again, I can just pipe this into grep and I can grep for VMX. And as you can see, we only get the CPU flags and VMX is highlighted red. Uh, and as I said, if you're using an AMD CPU, you're looking for SVM. So you can just type this in and you can search for SVM. Now, all you really need to be concerned about is that you actually have that. And most CPUs made after 2010 will have this virtualization technology baked in. So I'm just going to close that now. And so I've got this VM set up. So this is Debian 8. So let's just have a quick look at the system settings here. So I've allocated 7 gigs of RAM to this virtual machine and 4 CPU cores. And under the acceleration tab, I've selected both of the hardware virtualization options. Now, you wouldn't be able to click on these if your CPU did not have VMX or in AMD's case, SVM and it's not enabled in your BIOS. So once all of that is all kind of set up, I'm just gonna click OK, and I'm just gonna launch this virtual machine. Okay, so this VM has now booted up, and I'm gonna start off again just by opening up a terminal. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did previously, which was to cat slash proc slash CPU info. And as you can see, it's seeing that, yes, this is a Core i7 CPU, so it's an Intel i7. But we don't actually have that VMX flag here. And I can just pipe that into grep just to make sure. So grep for VMX. And we get no output. So VMX is not being virtualized. So this VM cannot see that the CPU that's in this machine actually has that capability. So I'm just going to open up... Um, VirtualBox because I installed it within this VM as well. And I've already set up a virtual machine within this VM. So I'm just going to click on system here. And as you can see, we don't have access to that acceleration tab. So we can't enable the hardware virtualization features within this VM. And if I click on the processor tab, you can see that I have one CPU set, but I can't increase that. Now, there's another thing that you've probably noticed, and that is that this is a 32-bit operating system. So I haven't got a 64-bit VM installed uh, within this VM. Now, the reason behind this is, again, without VMX, we are unable to install 64-bit OSs. That's just another byproduct of not having the hardware virtualization features available to us. So if I just click on new here um, and I click on the version drop down, you can see that we can only install 32 bit OSs. And if I just go to type Linux, you can see that again, we can only install 32 bit versions of Linux. So I'm just going to cancel that. Just one more thing to note with 32 bit OSs, you're limited on the amount of RAM that you can allocate to them. So if I just go into the system settings here and I'll just increase this to say four gigabytes and click OK, and I'm just gonna try and start this VM, you'll see that we get this error. And if we just click on details, you can see that it says VT-X, which is the Intel hardware virtualization features, uh, it's not available. So as we've seen by looking at the CPU flags, it isn't available within this VM. So I can't give it four gigabytes of RAM. So I'm just going to decrease that again. So I'll decrease it to three and a half. 
and I'm just going to click OK and I'm just going to start this VM and come back when it's finished booting up. OK, so this VM has finally booted up and if I just click on activities and I'm just going to type in a terminal here. You can see that it doesn't really run particularly fast, so it works, but it's probably not something that you would want to work with. And as you can see, there's a massive amount of lag. And even the mouse cursor is kind of almost stuttering. So if I just drag the mouse cursor into the VM that this VM is in, you can see the mouse moves perfectly fine and it's pretty, it's very responsive by comparison. So I think that's enough to just to illustrate the point that running a VM within a VM in VirtualBox does work, but it doesn't work so great. Now I'm just going to close this down and I'm going to open up VMware Workstation and do the same thing. So I'll come back once I've closed this down and opened up VMware Workstation. Okay, so as you can see, I have a virtual machine set up within VMware Workstation and it's again, it's Debian 8 and it's 64 bit. And if I just open up the processor settings for this VM, you can see that we have this option here, which is virtualize Intel VT X and then the AMD equivalent. Now, as you can see, I have this ticked here, which is virtualize Intel VT X and the AMD equivalent. So what this actually does is it makes those hardware virtualization technologies available within the VM that we're running. So if I just save this and I'll just start up this VM, let's try and look for that VMX flag within this VM. So I'm just going to open up a terminal and I'll just do the same thing again. So we're just going to cat slash proc slash CPU info. So you can see that we have VMX over here. So I'm just going to close this. And what I've done is I've installed VMware Workstation within this VM. So I'm just going to open that. And as you can see, I've got another Debian 8 VM. And I've allocated two processors to it and four gigs of RAM. And it is a 64-bit OS. So I'm just going to open up the processor tab. And as you can see, we have access to those hardware virtualization features. So I can actually virtualize it again so that a VM running within this VM, which is running within another VM, can run another VM, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to click Save. And I'm just going to start up this OS. So as you can see, we get this uh, pop-up saying, running VMware Workstation in a virtual machine will result in degraded performance. Do you want to continue? Just click OK. And I'm just going to ignore this and click OK. OK, so this second VM has finished booting. And I'm just going to make the VM that this one is in just full screen. Um, and I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. And just get rid of this top bar. So you can see that now we have a VM running within a VM using VMware Workstation and it's a lot more responsive than what we previously had with VirtualBox and it is 64 bit so and just increase the size of that. You can see that it's definitely usable. It's far more responsive than the VirtualBox equivalent. So I'm just going to type in uname um uname deck a and you can see this is a 64-bit version of Debian. And if we just cat out um, slash proc slash uh, CPU info, you can see that we have VMX available again. So if we wanted to, we could actually run another VM within this VM. Uh, but I'm not going to do that now. Because it could cause a black hole to open up and the universe to end. Okay, so as you can see, you can install VMs within VMs and it works a little bit better using VMware um, as opposed to using VirtualBox. And that's it. So I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.